What's going on friends? Welcome back to another video. Today is going to be one of your favorites, a planning video. But I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I have already planned all of the nitty gritty details and what I want to accomplish. Then I'm also gonna be getting all of the loose ends tied up as far as what else I need to do or anything that I need to get prepped and completely reset our homeschooling room. It's a little bit of a mess right now. We have everything out that we did over the anatomy unit. I have papers all over the place, personal stuff, all just scattered everywhere. So this is gonna be kind of a planning and a get it done with me. So I hope that you will enjoy. If you do, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know that this is your jam and let's get into it. Okay, so like I just mentioned, I have already planned out everything that I want for us to go over, to accomplish, and cover throughout this Greek mythology unit that we are going to be doing. Titus decided that he wanted to dive a little deeper in that. When we were reading our most recent Magic Treehouse book, it was talking about Pegasus and then Plato. There were a lot of references to ancient Greece as well as some of the events that occurred during that time. So I figured that was perfect to dive a little deeper. He was showing a lot of interest in the Greek gods that they were mentioning throughout the story. So we're just going to roll right along with that interest, dive into some of the details as well as cover the myths and fables because this is a great opportunity to tie that to a specific standard or idea if you want to. If you don't already know, I used to be an elementary teacher. Planning is one of my very favorite things. So tying the two together to create learning experiences, activities, all of those things that go along with creating a unit is right up my alley. I love doing this stuff. And so sharing it with you guys, I hope that it inspires you to think outside of the box sometimes whenever you are dealing with homeschooling. If you want to make something or go off on a little bit of a tangent when your child is learning something and shows more interest in it, don't be afraid to do that. Learn right alongside them because it truly has been so fun and bonding and something that we just have really enjoyed doing in our personal homeschooling experience. If you don't follow me on TikTok, go ahead and do that. I shared very short videos of the beginning of this planning process as well as some of the things that I made on Canva. I will show you guys those as soon as I get them printed out and organized a little bit better and then I will give you a walkthrough of what this upcoming unit is going to look like for us. I utilize the same process that I usually do first picking what our big topic is and I already shared with you guys that's going to include Greek mythology as well as history when it comes to ancient Greece. So we will be diving into kind of a fiction and a nonfiction in this whole unit. But I started with that theme and then I went to our Texas state standards to pick and choose some different learning objectives that we may not have covered or that I want to revisit just to really enrich what we're already going to be learning about and will help kind of navigate through the unit as a whole and to help me know that like we're hitting just certain topics and have a really deep understanding of those. In my last planning video, you guys saw that I tried to do digital planning and while I really enjoyed being able to do it on the computer, there's just something about a pencil and paper or a pen and paper. For me, I like to use pencil because I don't want to be constantly scratching things out when I change the plan, but there's just something about being able to get all of my ideas out that I just love and it really helps me to remember because I did the actual action of writing it down and it you know, helps just make that connection a little better and I can keep in mind what's upcoming so we know what to go over, what to cover you know, in more depth or what to hold off on exploring because we have more activities waiting further in the unit. So that's just a personal, personal? That's just a personal preference, but I did go ahead and print out that digital planner you saw in my last video and still used it, but I used a pencil this time so I could get everything out and all of my ideas. Now, after I looked over the standards and chose some of those, I went and started digging into what resources were already out there that would align with what we were aiming for with this particular unit and those particular objectives that I'm going to be sharing with you soon. And I found a gold mine. There were a couple of different websites that have complete lessons, units, quizzes, all kinds of resources that were really awesome. So I'll show you some of the ones that I stumbled upon here um, when we get into 
all the nitty gritty details in just a second, but I want to really encourage you that if you are kind of afraid to poke around and see what's out there, just do a little bit of research for yourself before you share it with your kids. Then that way you can act as the filter of what's going to be beneficial and what is going to align with their age and maturity and exactly what they're learning about. Some of the resources that I stumbled upon were like a few sentences that it said it was going to link to something very intricate and it didn't. So just stuff like that, you'll know not to waste your time putting it into all of the resources that you're going to be using if it's not something that's going to be very beneficial. So I spent the time to kind of poke through and see exactly what we wanted to use as well as getting on YouTube to see what we can use as additional video resources because I do enjoy starting off a new topic or even reviewing a topic before we use it to build upon by finding a, a good informational meaty video, but something that's still very kid friendly. And YouTube has a ton of creators out there that do a great job of doing that, um, tying, you know, real information and learning with something fun like a cartoon representation as well as putting things into kid terms but still having those really necessary vocabulary words and concepts that are going to enhance what they're being taught okay this is my crosswordmaker.com and you have like an auto arrange option over here where you can put in the word and the clue and then it will automatically generate a crossword puzzle Okay, my ear is on, so I'm so sorry if you're having a little bit of a hard time hearing me, but it's hot, so I'm not gonna turn it off. Um, I cut out everything, so I wanted to show you exactly what we'll be doing. Here's that word search that I showed you guys. So I have a copy for myself and his copy. So all of these things are gonna live in his interactive journal. So this will be one of the first things that we do. This is about the 12 Olympians. And then we have a family tree that's going to go in there next and that will kind of serve as our next day. Then we have the 12 labors of Hercules and I just made these a fill in the blank and then we're gonna go over each of the 12 stories that go along. Okay, this next resource that I want to share is Kids Love Greece, and this is where we will be pulling the stories of the 12 labors of Hercules. They have all of the different labors, stories, and everything that goes along with it, as well as a cute little graphic to help us remember. And then we are going to get into a few of the myths. So what's going to happen is he's going to cut the circles out and then just write a short summary about the... Um, about the myth that we cover. So we'll do all three of these over the span of probably a couple of days. And then he will draw his picture, whatever he wants to draw to go with Odysseus and the, Cy and the Cyclops. And then to go along with fables, he's going to be creating his own fable after we learn about Aesop and Aesop's fables. And then we will also be um, doing the Travelers in a Purse fable. He'll write about that. That's just going to be like a little title for him to put in. And then for each of those things, he's going to be doing the definitions in his journal. So I just have some little tags to go along with those as well that will serve just as like a little title. Here's the website that I was telling you guys about earlier that I felt was just like the jackpot. If you scroll down, they have all of these different resources. Many of them are very valuable. And what I loved about it is that there are interactive quizzes as well as resources for teachers here that are already made for you. When we move on to the nonfiction portion is when we'll start talking about the maps, the geography, how life was, all of those types of things, and that ties into our history. So I have a map as well as some little checkpoints for us to do and discuss. And then we are going to be diving into Alexander the Great. So these six little items will be the pieces that he cuts out to create a timeline and all of those will live in his interactive journal. Now I have one of these little Ziploc baggy thingies. These came from the Dollar Tree, but I like to keep all of our smaller pieces in there. Another thing that I went ahead and cut out is the months of the year in Spanish. This is from our little 
workbook. And so I'm gonna toss these in there. That's just an extra little activity that we need. But those small, what is a fable and what is a myth pieces are also going to live in here just so I don't lose them or anything like that. And then I will be adding these back behind me on the shelf to our things that we need to get done for the, for the unit. this video thank you so much for watching i appreciate you being here if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and i will see you in the next one